Call of Duty Zombies premiered in 2008's Call of Duty World at War as a surprise bonus game mode. A treat after you completed the main campaign, you found out there was this four-player wave-based zombie survival game where each wave the zombies get more difficult and faster. You can, you can play this online with friends, with randoms, or locally to players. So a big deal, there's this whole other chunk to the game that you didn't know about. It was extremely popular and released DLC packs on World at War and then in future Treyarch games we're looking at, they released more as well. I believe it's going the wrong direction though and there's reasons why. Most of us that stop playing, that get sick of it, don't we don't really care why. And I was in the, in the same boat, really. There's like some reasons you kind of know, but you play for a little bit, you check out the map, see what the new weapons are, and then you get sick of it, you stop playing. But it doesn't have to be that way. So today, exploring the top five reasons why. And for comparison, I'm comparing the World at War maps, mainly focusing on the first one, Nocturne and Toten, in comparison to D-Machine. But these are apply to all the games across the years. Immersion breaks right away when you can have any weapon that you want. I have an LMG with, a, I had a clip of 90 bullets and then I upgrade to one with 75. But then there's the story told over the intercoms and it has this action movie type of an atmosphere. While you don't really have the windows, there are some, but you don't have to bother boarding them up since you have this open area where zombies uh, pop in. And you also don't have to worry about the points that you don't need because it's much easier in this game to get points for taking out zombies. You don't have to worry about headshots or where you fire. And other people can piggyback off of your kills as well. Completely different inside the bunker in Knock Darren Toten. Really trying to create a survival game by limiting what you have. You just have, everyone has the same M1911 pistol. You have far less rounds than the hundreds of rounds that you have with your starting gun and D-Machine. And creating an atmosphere as well. You just hear the moans and the groans of the zombies, but you don't see where they're at. There's this large area outside that they can walk in. And then you can look off in the distance, you kind of see them shambling towards you. So much more interesting in that way. And then you're managing, though. You can't just be popping them off one after another because it's much harder to get points. If you do certain types of kills, you don't get as many points. So you want to be meleeing them, which, which creates occurrences of them sometimes popping in. And while this is all going on, everyone's around you, so you kind of hear what they're doing, and it, it makes it a much more immersive and a co-op type of experience. Flashing back to D-Machine, though, with that overpowered starting weapon, you often go off on your own with little to no consequences. It gets really repetitive. Something you have in a lot of multiplayer games nowadays is what I call bloat. This is all the crap on your HUD. Do you need it? Maybe you don't. And then the pickups that you have and all the aids that you have. Like when you're shooting the zombies, you see how much damage it does. Going back to World at War, though, the menu first. All you do is you pick your Nazi zombies. You go to which map that you want to play. And boom, that's it. When you get into the lobby, you'll see the other players have different levels, but these are meaningless in terms of zombies. That's why some have, have just one, because you can't level up in World at War's zombies. Even at the end of the game, you get some points, but it doesn't apply to it. You just see what your kills were, revives, that sort of stuff. Besides how the bloat in-game, you have it in the menu. This is just zombies. Look at all the tabs on the top here, because you can upgrade everything. You have your starting weapons, you, you don't have them all unlocked right away. You have to level up to get all of them, and then you can upgrade all these, do more damage, different effects, more clips, that sort of thing. But not it doesn't just stop there. You also have the gunsmith to make your weapons even stronger. Again, you're unlocking all of these by leveling up. Then you got your field upgrades, your ammo mods. You can even upgrade your perks. You never, I mean, you never had that in the old games to make them even stronger so you're not the same if you're at a higher level it's not because of your skill it's just because you played more you have more of those stupid ether crystals to make your character stronger the funny thing is you don't need any of this it serves as a distraction as something to keep you engaged rather than the gameplay you saw me start i have an lmg i'm not that high of a level i had one with an even higher clip i just switched the guns out but this is a common thing, though, in a lot of games. They have all these rewards, all the stimulation, this crap on screen, what you get, skins, whatnot. And, of course, that you can even buy 
some of the guns to make them a little like a pinch stronger but like with all those other games what it has in common is you don't need any of this stuff but it isn't it's not an excuse because it does affect the game this is the focus like getting the rewards achievements whatever the high round stuff rather than just enjoying playing through it it needs all this stuff to keep it going this leads us to the overpowered player why is this in the game well it's to keep you in it long enough where you get the rewards get the stimulation again going back to the bloat the hud you see everything around me the the map the rewards i get the damage that i'm dealing this is only possible if i am strong enough to take out like a large group in a short amount of time and they want to keep me in it that's why even if i get town perks that i have i keep them if i am revived in time Jumping back to World at War, totally different. I have the like one of the strongest weapons here, the Browning. And one that the other guy's downed. He has the ray gun, fortunately. But I need him to keep going. So I know I'm gonna eventually run out. I gotta go back. I have to revive him. He can't be running around the map doing it every once. I wouldn't be able to, to go and get him. He has to be in that spot. And the design for the gameplay is there for these World at War maps. Second one for Eric you're seeing here. Um, different layout, but someone's trying to do that stand guarding an area thing. He's not running around, but he's kind of doing it between camping and, and just training. He's standing there. And this doesn't work. It's much more unforgiving that you will get downed if someone isn't in close proximity or, or you're not sticking to that camping spot. And even for me, even though I'm in the spot, it keeps me up for longer. But everything's going to run out. I need that other guy to be taking his shots shooting at that straight line of zombies. And you have this on all the maps. Like the first one especially, you're even weaker. You don't have any of the perks. And uh, this will often happen. People will be off somewhere. They'll get downed. And then uh, the other players will kind of take note of this and they'll go back to your camping spot. So you'll, you'll have that uh, by game design. This is the important part. They'll go back to where the other players are, even if it's not camping, just to kind of stick around. Because you can get down so easily. You are far weaker. Even in Durai's, this is the last one, which is the most open map of the four. If you're off somewhere and it's it's not a decent camping spot or you're not around other people, just running around, you both get down. And then these people often rage quit. Big, open, boring, and most importantly, easy. And you have this right from the start when you spawn in. You have this open area. It's built only for training around. This is the most basic strategy because you don't need other teammates with you. You can be running by yourself and since you have that powerful gun in the beginning, there's often less action, ironically, which you wouldn't think. Going back to Noct here, close quarters, so you're constantly in combat, but you'll have these moments where you all have to run in if someone gets downed and you hear the guns that they have in the background, you're taking turns firing, and you're looking back and forth. There's just much more tension and there's more uh, combat really overall because you're all in the same area dealing with the same zombies in larger groups. Back to D machine here. I'm slowly reloading. I'm not even sprinting. I don't have speed cola. Now here I run after I reload my starting weapon. I have this large group here, but it's in this hugely open area. So it's no problem dispatching everyone in the group. Trying to do the same thing in Noct, I'm not somebody else's, training them around in a group doesn't work out the same way. There's no space to run. You all get caught kind of like around the pillars and boom, that's it. And that's why they tried to build upon this with uh, Ferreric splitting up the group because the emphasis was one, working together. What could have even a bigger impact than those two things? The underpowered AI. This ruins everything and why recent COD Zombies maps feel so easy. Here you're looking at the Sprinter from the second map, Fair Eric, where I can't reload. I keep running around and I, I lucked out because they got a bomb so I was able to take him out. Here he is again attacking one of the teammates. The point of this is they improved the AI, also grabbing through the windows and then they, they threw this out with Shino Numa, the third map. Taking a look one more time at that same clip. Here I am reloading without sprinting. I just have Juggernog. I don't have speed cola, my base weapon, and I'm knocking out this whole group. No sprinter zombies, 
and I'm just firing in a straight line. I'm not even looking down the sights. Same thing with the dogs as well. They have plague hounds in this one, which is from like the hell hounds. Everything is more passive. Everything is easier. I have a rocket launcher, and I'm, I'm knocking them out one by one. No juggernaut. This is round eight. I'm by myself. So if this was World at War, I would have been downed <laughs> easily with the exact same weapons. In contrast here, Dare Rise. Here I was unlucky. But still, I'm with my group. This is a round five, uh, Hellhounds round, and we all get down. This, this is what happens sometimes. Sometimes you, you just gonna get unlucky. You know, much more engaged in like the weapons that you are getting and, and working together. Even the higher rounds when I have everything. I got Jug, I got Speed Cola, I have the Wunderwaffen. Just two of us and working with my teammate again, you know, no surprise. But making just a couple mistakes you can get down, even with the perks. It's not showing my health. I don't know what's going on. I don't need everything, you know, told what's, what's going to happen, that sort of a thing. And this makes you work together much more, and you see what the other guy's doing, and then you also are in the action a lot more because everything is coming towards your group. And there's just more variety. Lastly, taking a look at Crank, since I played this game a little bit later. This is a game mode where you are on a timer, and to increase the timer, you have to keep knocking out zombies. And this is an example, an evidence of problems with the map. They have this to keep you engaged in the combat because it is so boring in this big open map. It's a challenge to continually be knocking out zombies. It's kind of like with uh, the past couple games you had, the Gobble Gums, the Elixirs, and those other game modes. And then uh, the next game, you never see them again. I see the same thing happening with this one. One bright spot you could call a dishonorable honorable mention is Black Ops Arcade 3. This was a blast to play. I played the original and the original Black Ops, but there are improvements such as being able to walk everywhere, the mini-map, the pickups. Here I am in the first-person mode, which makes it easier to dispatch all the different zombies and, and different types. But this is really where the passion, I think, has gone for the developers, because you don't have any of the extra crap that you're dealing with with uh, the main mode. You don't have to make the motivation about getting awards or getting to high rounds or trying to get some whales on board. There's none of that stuff. You just jump in. There's no overpowered weapon that you start with. You have your three teammates. You're working together constantly. You have different random pickups to make it interesting. You're constantly engaged in combat. The objective isn't to get to some high round or get some weapon easter egg things like that and it's an interesting experience for what the game mode is like subscribe see you next time mm -hmm.